Hey everybody, everybody's here. We never, we always do a hiccup. It always got a hiccup. Always a hiccup. <laughs> but anyway, everybody's here, and uh, I've got a, a tiger walking behind me, which means that we are going to be doing walk cycles today. I'm going to give you a, a little sneak peek into some of the lessons that we have on our website and do a, a, a live walk cycle lesson with you. Something that I had done with me many years ago. Uh, I remember sitting down with Glenn Keane and uh, when I was a young whippersnapper. Whippersnapper? I got a, it's cold here today. It's uh, We had a cold front come through Florida and it's a very chilly 55 degrees out right now. But anyway, um, I hope you guys, for you Americans out there, I hope you had a really great Thanksgiving holiday. Uh, we had an amazing one. We had a lot of fun here. And uh, uh, and I hope you guys had a great weekend and great day. I really want to reiterate or iterate and make very strong uh, statement today that um, our our Cyber Monday sale is still happening, and it's like over forty percent off on a lot of things. And I think it's a seventy percent or seventy five dollar savings on our premium membership. So there's a lot of great savings going on at our website today. Lots of lessons and, and all kinds of great sta stuff. Everything is on sale. And that's still going on. It's going to end tonight. So you might want to hurry up and get over there, especially if you're thinking about some Christmas presents and that sort of thing. But, um, and I'll, I'll bring that up a couple times throughout today. But uh, I wanted, I thought today would be kind of fun um, to do an, uh, a walk cycle. I, I, sh I wanted to show you guys kind of a down and dirty, quick, easy way of doing a profile walk cycle, uh, kind of the way I think about it when when I'm animating, and then you can take this information and you can kind of turn it in space and you can do, you know, and once you understand it, you can do three quarter walk cycles and all that sort of thing. But before we get into all that, as usual, I want to introduce you to my son Dustin, who's manning the controls today. There he is, mm. fresh off the boat from Los Angeles. From last yep. night, uh, we uh, we went to uh, last week or a week before last. Well, anyway, we went out to CTN, yep. and uh, which is the Creative Talent Network big animation conference that they have in Burbank, California, and uh, that was great. Big partying. It was just, it's just a big party time for us. We get together with old friends and party, oh, but yeah. uh, it was awesome. It was and we, awesome. we had some really good. I uh, got together with a lot of fans and, and followers, and and looked at a lot of great portfolios, and did some demonstrations, and it was great. But anyway, we get we came back, and Dustin stayed, so he stayed in Los Angeles with his friends for an extra week, and now we got him back. Yay! <laughs> and then also over in Sarasota, Florida, about 160 miles from here, I've got my business partner Nick Birch. And he's going to be manning questions as well. But uh, why don't we go to the desktop, Dustin? And uh, why don't we go ahead and dive in? Let's do it. So what I'm going to be doing here is we're going to be doing a walk cycle. So the first thing I want to do is let's just create a ground plane. So I'm going to create a new background layer. And I'm going to have that go. I'm going to have that hold, which is good. And I'm just going to right about here. Just going to draw. Whoops. Well, I wanted that to go straight. Let me do that again. I thought if I hold my... Oh, I guess that's close enough. Um, I thought if I hold my space bar down, it did a straight line, but I guess it doesn't. Uh, but anyway, that's close enough. So I've got a nice straight line. That's just going to be our ground plane. And what we're going to do is we're going to do... I'm going to jump back up to... Oh, I did that on the wrong layer. Let me do that again. Uh, create a background layer. There we go. And we're going to go straight across. There we go. And I'm going to jump back up to my animation layer. So um, what I want to do is, uh, what do you think? Should we do like a, an existing animal, like a cat or a dog or a bear? Or should we like make up an animal? Like make something up would be kind of fun. We're trying to mix it up. Like if I, if I made something up like, like this. And uh, once again, you guys, I just want to remind you that there's, you know, uh, but I, I want to make sure that we, it's going to be a four-legged made-up animal. So I yeah. want it kind of based on, like, if we did something like. How about something like, um, uh, because of the, 
the new quote unquote live action trailer for, trailer for Lion King, maybe a, a young young lion like Nala or something. I like that idea. <laughs> Somebody asked platypus. <laughs> Did you see the new Lion King trailer, speaking of which? Yeah, so let's do that, because th uh, this is something I was going to make up really quickly. I don't know if this is going to be right or not. Oh, let me see. I, 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 can't, re I can't stop drawing it, sorry. <laughs> we'll have to wait till he's done. <laughs> yeah. Because this and then this would be back here. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna do. Boop. Let's do a line. Let's do a line. Okay, and, yeah. uh, and for in celebration of Lion King. I'm gonna I'm not gonna mess with the main and all that because that's gonna have a whole bunch of over overlapping. Today yeah, I want to focus that, on. That's what I was thinking of the the young. Young, yeah, I want to focus on mechanics. So I want you guys, at the end of this, I want you to understand how the foot patterns go. All right, so the first thing I want you to think about, I, I just want to explain. In a walk cycle, um, the faster a character moves, the faster an animal moves, and this is very obvious, but it, you'd be surprised how many people forget this. The slower they're moving, the more feet are on the ground at the same time. The faster they move, the less feet are on the ground. It makes sense. But you'd be amazed at how many people forget that. And so during a walk, because you're moving at a slow pace, you need stabilization. And two feet on the ground at a slow pace, you're going to fall over. Okay? So what's the next most stable setup? Well, three feet because it creates a tripod. Boom, boom, boom. Okay? There's a tripod. So that's a stable setup. And so if you have four feet on the ground, and I'm going to set them up as if they're walking, they're going to be like this. So at any given time, let's say the, it's always the back feet that are going to come off the ground. So let's do this. I'm going to go like this. There's the feet, 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 feet. So let's start here. <clears throat> These feet are on the gr are on the ground. This foot is off the ground. It comes forward, replaces this foot, which comes off the ground. Okay, and this th and then this foot settles here. This foot comes off the ground, and then you've got a tripod there. And then this foot comes forward, replaces here or it's placed here. As this foot comes forward, replaces this one, and you got a tripod. Then you got a tripod. And a tripod and this it's a moving tripod as each back foot comes forward and replaces the front foot as each front foot moves forward okay I know that sounds a little bit confusing but when we see it in practice you'll understand what I'm talking about the first thing we want to do is come up with a uh, a starting pose and I've got a YouTube question um, oh yeah the Lion King is not really live action though it's CGI do you find do you find the remake pointless you know what I don't. I don't. I'm. I'm actually, to be honest with you, I'm. Oh, I've always been anxious. I've always been really interested to see what it would look like in a more realistic, textured world. And uh, so, for trying to get at for it to be live action, yeah, to put it in a realistic environment. So for me, I I don't find it pointless. I'm. I actually find it kind of exciting. So, um, I don't know. I just, I just kind of do. And what's so, the software you're currently using? Oh, I am using TV Paint right now. So I'm going to throw in a really quick scribbly, um, a very quick scribbly lion. And I'm going to have, I'm going to have him have the lion's head just dropping down just a little bit. Now I'm going to very quickly... Just indicate very quickly. How do you trick yourself onto your drawing screen? This is witchcraft. <laughs> <laughs> That's the magic of Dustin right there. Mm -hmm. 
So I'm going to have these, this line coming up. There's a head here. And the first thing I want to do, we've got muscle that comes into here, comes and in, connects into the shoulder. I'm actually going to have shoulder back here and a shoulder here. Okay. I'm going to shrink this up just a little bit. Whoops. What am I? Why is that? Whoops. Are you okay? I don't know what I just did. Let me get rid of that. What the heck just happened? Hello? Uh-oh. That's weird. I don't know what just happened. I didn't do it. I know. That's so bizarre. Well, we're going to start over. Would you be interested in seeing a photorealistic remake of uh, A Brother Bear? Yeah, I would love that. Oh, here's a scene that I'm working on right now. Let me turn it way down. This is one that I'm working on. For the... Uh... <laughs> Travis Blaze asks, How did you shrink yourself onto your drawing screen? This is witchcraft. <laughs> Travis Blaze is my brother, so I guess Travis is watching right now. So, um, I'm going to do a new project. And, oh, I know why. Because I, I had my, uh, I had my, uh, my size set wrong. 1920... By 1080. There we go. Now we're going to be all set. So let's, uh, sorry about that, guys. I was like, what are they, what's going on here? So we're going to bring this straight across, back up here, and back to our lion. So somebody has a uh, brother bear related question. Uh, okay. Is it based off of one story, or is it like Lion King and a mixture of tales? It's it's an it's a completely original story that's based on the flavor of a whole bunch of Native American myths and legends that we researched. Now, I'm a big fan of Native American myths and legends, and so and as a kid, I read them a lot. And so when I started Brother Bear, I wanted us to write our own, and so that's where that came from, and. Uh, and so, yeah, so that's that's what that is. So here, drawing the cat. Uh, Twitch comment. Oh, my God, my eyes have been open. I've been trying to find a way to visualize slow quadruped walking for ages. The tri tripod description helped it click all into place. Yay, I'm glad that that clicked into place. Um, yeah, if you could see, if you could see, like, imprints happening along the ground, and if you could connect them, you would see this, this, progression of joining triangles of uh of uh yeah tripod so what we're doing here is i'm starting with my first key pose and we want we what we want is i'm going to start with this foot back so what we have is a shoulder blade up here actually the shoulder blade should be just a little bit lower because I'm going to have them both equally spaced. And this shoulder is going to be back here. Chest coming down. And when you have a, a cat, have the shoulder blades come up and the neck is up here. And the back is usually right about in here. Now this point right here, because I'm going to have the front leg here. The back leg back here. Because I'm going to have them apart... This is going to be the lowest point, okay, in the cycle. Because the cycle, the shoulder blades go up and down, okay? And the hips will go up and down. And they alternate. They go back and forth, like so. And so, at this point, they're going to be at their lowest because the front feet are spread apart, right? So here, and I'm going to move this so that he's actually touching the ground. It's going to be somewhat like this. Okay. Don't cats and dogs walk differently? They somewhat, not not as differently as you might think. Okay, so here. Now, and certain cat, I mean, obviously, like a a a a, a lion is going to walk differently than a house cat because just because of weight. 
you know, lion is going to have a lot of overlap and, you know, muscle jiggle and that sort of thing. Um, uh, YouTube question. How do you prevent your tablet nibs from wearing down too fast? I, um, I don't. <laughs> my, my tablet, my nibs actually do wear down pretty fast. So I, um, I just, uh, I go through a lot. I keep a lot handy. I keep, them, I keep them right up on top of my, on the top of my desk. So, I'll tell you, so anyway, so I'm, I've just moved him. I just moved the cat. And, uh, and so, once again, this is muscle coming down into here. There's our shoulder. This is going to be, there's going to be a group of muscles here. Tricep muscles, all that, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. And because this is the low point, we're going to have a high point in the hips back here. All right, now I want to make sure that I draw the body long enough. So the hips are going to be up here at the high point. And there's the top of the pelvis. There's the flexible part of the spine. Rib cage comes through like so. Latissimus muscles, serratus muscles attached to the ribs. This comes back here. All right, so there's... That's happening there, and I'm going to tie this down once uh, before I, we actually start animating, because I like I want this to animate fairly cleanly. So now, now that we know the placement of our front feet, we're automatically going to know the placement of our back feet. And th think of it this way: remember, we're creating a tripod. So if this is a tripod here, if our front feet, if this is in the background, this foot's in the background, <clears throat> and this is forward then the tripod is going to be the back foot is going to be on the ground over here of the the back left foot and the the back right foot which is the the back leg closest to us is going to be coming forward right now and is getting ready to replace this foot once it lifts off the ground okay so that tells us by having this front foot placement these front feet placements that and i'm going to have this back foot back a little bit I got a quick question here. So that means, just real quick, okay. that means this foot here is coming off the ground like so. And our other foot, which is drawn through, the knee is right about here. Right about here is going to be right here. 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 Like so. Okay. Go ahead, Dustin. Sorry. Uh, I, have, I have school work that involves flying. Any lessons or tips on animating bird flight? Yes. As a matter of fact, if you go to uh, the traditional animation um, Facebook site, traditional animation, um, there is a lecture on there that I just did on mechanic, uh, bird, mechanic, bird mechanics in flight. And I think I have one on YouTube that I did as well. On my channel. Okay, so there is a rough drawing. Muscle comes down in here, coming off of there. Uh, femur connects back in here, connects into the knee. And there's our knee right there. There's our glute muscles coming down. The calf muscles coming down, coming into the ankle. Okay, so, like so. So now what I want to do is I'm going to create a new layer. Oh, first of all, I want to place this in the right spot. I'm going to put it right about here. And I'm going to go ahead and lose that background. I'm going to shrink this up just a little bit just to make sure we have enough room. And, and now that I have our feet placed right, I'm not too worried about the seeing the, the ground plane. That ground plane is not going to fit. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of it. Boop. Just turn it off. And this one here, I'm going to knock that back. And we're going to create a new layer, animation layer, right on top. Go ahead, Dustin. Uh, this animation, can this be done easily in Photoshop if I'm not quite ready to purchase TV Paint? You know what? I, I know you can do this in Photoshop. I don't know how. Um, I, um, I, I don't... Whoops, that's not what I want. I want my this tool. Um, I don't animate in Photoshop. I only animate in TV Paint. And so I'm sure there's someone out there that knows how to do it. 
I don't know how to do it. How do you not get that dumb line from putting your hand on the screen when drawing on the Cintiq? I always do that. Um, if you have touched, I, I don't use touch. Maybe that's what you're talking about. Maybe. Yeah, because I, um, I, uh, I can't stand the touch feature, so I turn it off. Uh, YouTube question. Were there any songs from Brother Bear that you didn't get to use in the final project? Yes, there were. There's a few of them. And actually, if you watch the DVD, we have a, um, a, a special section where we um, included uh, one or two of the songs. Actually, I, you know what I did wrong on her? You know what I did wrong on her, Dustin? You know what I did? What did you do? <laughs> I made her snout too short. And a little too fat. Yeah, so I'm going to see. This is why I. Whoa. I'm going to do this. There. Oh, see, that's much more lion like. Much more lion like. Outside of drawing, painting, illustration, or animating, uh, what's your favorite form of artistic expression? Music? Maybe Dustin's interpretive dance moves? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Dustin's interpretive dance moves. <laughs> um, music, for sure. Uh, if I wasn't, if I hadn't become an artist, uh, a visual artist, I would have become a musician, for sure. And I would be an interpretive dancer. <laughs> What's your favorite zoo to visit in Florida? Uh, to get nice shots of the cats to draw. Miami Metro Zoo. Oh, hey, let's save this as cat walk cycle. And we're going to save that on my desktop. Whoops, I didn't save it to the desktop. Have you always drawn big cats or also smaller cat species? Are species like lynx out of your comfort zone? Or are they pretty much the same? Um, big cats are my, are my most comfortable. Although for this guy, whoops. Although this guy, um, hold on one second. Are you okay? Well, I turned off. I turned off one of the things. I got to go back. <laughs> I'm out of. I'm out of sorts, man. I thought that was the one that. Was I've got that there. setting. I've, I've got it put on the setting where it's only. Uh, it's only showing. Where is it? It's only showing one layer at a time. Let me go to view. Display, uh, I forgot how to change that. Here I use it every day, but I never use this aspect of it. And I forget. Hi there, I'm learning about layout and I wanted to know if you had any experience in this field and if you could talk about it at all. Thank you so much for being awesome. Well, thank you. Um, well, as far as layout goes, it, it really comes down to composition. And you need to know a lot about camera cutting camera movement a lot of that stuff i'm not an expert at that so i don't feel comfortable talking about it um but uh there's a lot of books out there look at bruce block uh check out bruce blocks uh work on camera movement layout that sort of thing that's one person i really recommend uh let me look at this real quick you gotta I gotta stop for a second i'm, I'm trying to remember where the thing is to turn it on where I, I turn off one, I'm looking at one layer at a time. Display current. Oh, there we go. Activate all layers. Whoops, that's not it. Display current. Ba, ba, ba. Oh, that's not it. It's, it's, a, it's when it, uh, it's like I'm looking, the view is... Merge all. No, I don't want to merge. I feel like an idiot. Sweet Lord, how much coffee are you drinking here? <laughs> I know. The bay rope. This is I, only one cup. <laughs> That's a big cup, though. Have I done a chimp walk cycle before? I know I never have. Although I've walked, I've watched chimps, and uh, uh, I would love to. Uh, to, to animate a chimp. Uh, view. Display with aspect ratio. 
rooms. What is this? What is going on? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to try something. I'm going to save it. Uh, hopefully, I wonder if I quit out of it. Catwalk cycle. There we go. This is driving me nuts. This is embarrassing. Sorry, guys. File. Open. Reset. Reset. There we go. It's back. <laughs> I just had to re had to close it and reopen it. Okay. Yes. Uh, what was the most complicated scene you have worked on, and how did you approach it? Well, there's I, I've talked about this before in another video on my YouTube channel. There is a, a Roger Rabbit cartoon that I worked on called Trail Mix Up. It was an animated short, and um, I had this shot that was extremely mechanically difficult because it was Roger tangled up in these ropes, swinging around, twisting in the air, going, moving forward and backward in perspective while he's spinning, slowing down, and the swing slowing down, and then starting to reverse, and making all that look like, it, like the physics are right, all while he's acting. So he's twisting and acting, and it almost killed me. But, um, but I got it, and the, I, I, I just broke it down one piece at a time so it really it really was about figuring out the, the swing first of all then figuring out the perspective then figuring out the rotation and i did that all with like a, a flower sack once i had that all figured out then i just animated roger right over the top of all that and it actually came out pretty good okay so I'm getting, this is taking way too long for this first drawing. Let's get this done really quick. So here we've got the front shoulders coming forward. Forearms into the wrist. A little bit of fur coming off the elbow. There's a little bit of meat there. Into the thumb. Comes up. Or do claw as they call it. Right there, okay. Then this comes back. There's a lot of muscle coming off of here. The triceps, the deltoid is up in here. There's that claw on the back. Forearm coming down into the wrist, and then here. Do you prefer animating on paper or animating that you paint? You know what? I used to, and I, I this is this is honest, and I'm not I'm not getting paid by TV Paint. I'm not making a plug because of any kind of benefit. I have come to love animating on TV Paint more than working on paper. Now, do you give up something? But yes, I don't have a physical scene, and I do miss that. But what I gain by working in TV paint, especially working on a Cintiq like this, is I, I can play it back instantly. I can add my drawings. Um, I don't have to reshoot anything. Um, you know, back in the day when I was animating, you know, traditionally for Disney, I'd have to shoot my, my scenes. And inevitably, there's always a, a drawing that would get out of sync or something would get shot wrong. And it was just a mess. And it just happened all the time. And it was just part of the part of the deal. And with TV paint, I don't ever have to worry about that. Periscope question: Which is harder to learn, how to draw an, uh, animals or humans? Well, it's um, they're they're both. None of them. Yeah, I don't know if one is harder than the other. Humans are hard, and only because we're so familiar with our own bodies that when it's out of whack, you can tell. You know, when the drawing's not right. Um, and, uh, animals are hard because for a lot of people, it's just very foreign. So they, they each have their own kind of difficulties. All right. So there's, there's just a quick, it wasn't very quick, but there's a quick, uh, cat. Okay. So we're going to animate that. So there's our first key pose okay now we want to create an opposite pose this is where the cheat is that you can only do uh you can only do this in profile 
and we're gonna do we're gonna create a cheat so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a new drawing I'm gonna turn this off now because we don't need it and I'm going to turn on my light table there we go so now we can see the drawing before now I'm gonna create the opposite drawing now the opposite drawing is going to be well actually you know what I should do because I want to have a little bit of side to side um, yeah I want to have a little bit of side to side I was gonna skip that but I think I don't think I will with you guys this is what I'm gonna do I'm gonna push so with this leg forward with that left foot this one right here with this left foot forward that's gonna turn the head toward us just a little bit and so what we're gonna get is a little bit of a look something like this how do you line up the key shots for your cycle that's what we're gonna that's what I'm gonna show you guys I'll show you exactly how I line them up now this like I said it only it only works really in, in profile so here, and I'm pushing this a little more than it probably should. So here you can see that, there we go, that it's turned just a little bit. And like I said, I'm turning it a little bit more than I should. But I want to push, I want to exaggerate a little bit so you guys understand what I'm talking about. So here the cat's head is turned toward us just a little bit because this arm as it comes forward it's going to push push the head towards us okay now now I want to create the opposite key and this is going to prevent any glitches if you've ever done a, a walk cycle before or a run cycle sometimes your keys don't match up and you end up with this <laughs> this funny little glitch the way we're going to do this is going to prevent any glitches um Twitch question. Hello, do you think that we have to learn storyboard after learning how to draw or at the same time? Uh, after learning how to draw or at the same time. I think you need, I think to go into storyboarding, you should know how to draw. So um, take that for what it's worth. Because if you can't draw while you're, in, while you're storyboarding, it's going to hold you up. Storyboarding, your drawing should be your first language. And so you shouldn't even have to think about it. YouTube question, have you seen the new Grinch movie? I've not. Uh, uh, Did it come out? I have not seen it, no. I mean, yes, it has come out. Okay, so let me jump into this real quick, otherwise we're never going to get done. So the one thing that's going to match is the silhouette, okay? So the silhouette is going to be absolutely the same from one key to the next as we're doing opposite keys. The only difference is we're going to turn it the other way. So here, the ear is coming this way. And this is going to be this eye. Like this. You see what I'm doing? And then this comes down. As the nose comes up this way. Like that. And then the mouth come around here so if I flip back and forth you can see it looks like he's shaking his head back and forth or she in this case okay this is how we create or how I create that opposite key And then here, this is all going to come down, except here, now, the shoulder is here. Which is your favorite uh, Brother Bear song? Um, Great Spirit, uh, the, the Transformation song, I think. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I agree. Here, we're going to have the skin kind of stretching this way. I think I have a new uh, question from Nick. All right. Quite YouTube question. How many other animators as well as you worked on Raja and Aladdin? Uh, and Aladdin. It was uh, just one other animator. So I And I pretty much did the whole thing. So, because um, it, it, was, it was a very small role. 
And here the toes are going to be fairly even, so I'm just going to play them straight ahead like so. So you can see, and here's the opposite ear, I'm keeping the same silhouette like so, but changing the placement. See what I'm doing there? And this is going to give me my, my two of my four keys. There's going to be four keys here. Okay. It's going to come up. We've got those tricep muscles again. This is going to come back. Did you work with the animator who animated Sarabi from Lion King? Um, Sarabi. Yeah, no, uh, I mean, we all worked together. I don't think we had any scenes together. Uh, I animated Nala's mom. There's, she, she was only in one or two shots. What would you do if Glenn King was watching this stream? I'd say, hello, Glenn. Thank you for everything that you've given me. <laughs> <laughs> Glenn is my single most... Uh, he inspired me more than anybody else in the art world. He's, uh, he's responsible for really lighting that fire inside me. So you can see what I'm doing here is creating the opposite. The silhouette stays the same, but I'm creating the opposite foot placement. And so here, the hips are going to come forward. Thigh comes forward. We have the break in the knee right there. This comes down. Now here I'm going to have that foot drop down just a little bit. So it's on the same plane. Uh, this looks amazing. I just subscribed to your annual classes. I'm currently finishing up Don Bluth's lessons. Well, that's awesome. Don Bluth is fantastic. Fantastic. He's down fantastic. So here, so now you can see I'm creating the opposite foot. Okay, there's the foot coming there, and then this is gonna, now is going to be on the opposite side. Coming in, actually, we'll still have an ankle there. <coughs> YouTube, YouTube question, will the Acting for Animation course be released before the, end, before the year ends, or will it be available next year? I really want it for Christmas. <laughs> my, goal, my goal, actually, was to have it done by Thanksgiving, and... Um, circumstances with all of our travel and everything else I wasn't able to get it done it will definitely I promise promise you it will be done by Christmas um, Nick and I we have to be on an airplane on Saturday and we're gonna be going to Manchester England where I'm giving um, I think it's okay to say now Nick because I think everyone knows about it but um, I'm going to work for three days with um, uh, uh, Travelers Tales games who do all the lego movies uh games and um, i'm going to be working with them and talking to them about story and animation and all kinds of fun stuff and uh uh and so we're going to be there for seven days but as soon as we get back then we're going to get that course up and ready for you guys and out the door um facebook comment bath scene is one where nala is in the same scene as sarabi yes that's the one I, I animated that where she's getting where she's getting cleaned and she's getting licked up her face. I did all that. Okay, so now we've got two keys. And you can see they're opposite keys. See there? I'm just flipping back and forth. So here, let me jump back here. Let me color that in to make just to make sure they match a little bit. I'm trying to keep it very simple. Now we have to create opposite key so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this over and we have to put a drawing in between of an opposite key so let's do that got to drink I drink my little spot of coffee uh, YouTube question may I ask if you have met or worked with Wendy Grebe I have not I'm sorry I don't know Wendy Grebe who's that when, I don't know Wendy Grebe. I don't know who Wendy Grebe is. Oh. oh. <laughs> okay, so here, here I'm, I'm just going to take a break from answering questions just for a second. Because I want to jump in here.
Let's, let's talk about how the next keys work. So the next key, I want the high point. So the shoulders I'm going to have in the high point. And the way the anatomy works on a cat, and I'm sure a lot of you have seen this, when a cat walks, their, their shoulder blades float. Okay? They're not attached. They're only attached. They're not attached bone to bone. Shoulder blades are only attached through tendon and muscle. So when a cat walks, you can really see because of the weight and the shoulder blades being attached to the sides, they do a very big up and down movement. And so we're going to have right here as this foot, here's our first drawing. This foot's going to come back right here and it's going to come up directly underneath the body. Okay. So let's do that. Here we go. We're going to come forward. And, and the other thing too I'm going to come back to the head because there's a there's a little bit of complexity to the head that I want you to see. And so the other thing too is as as this foot comes back, the the front left, as it comes back, that means the front right is coming off the ground and coming forward. So we have to think about that. So let's get that. So there's the here's where the shoulder blade is right here, and if it's coming up off the ground, then I'm just going to. It's actually going to stretch back just a little bit further before it comes off and, and off that other key. So I'm going to keep it right about here. But what I'm going to do, well, actually, I'm going to, no, I'll move it forward just a little bit. So I'm going to bring it forward like so and lift it. Now, because I'm lifting it, what's going to happen? This foot, this front left foot is actually taking the weight. So that's going to push that shoulder blade way up, right? And the weight is coming off of this foot, our front left, our front right foot. So that shoulder blade is going to drop. Like so. Now, it's the only reason it's not dropping from where it is here is because it's being lifted. You see it being lifted right there. But in relation to the rest of the body, which is actually coming up right here like so it's dropping so here I'm lifting that elbow up like that and it's coming forward actually I'm gonna bring it forward even more yes I'm gonna bring it forward like way up here let's do that That'll be even better because we'll get a better spread ultimately of the arms. So here, and if the arm is up here, now the thing about cats is as they walk, and actually you we do this as humans, the, the paws turn in. So the paw is actually going to be turning in this way. How do you not get a headache flipping between the layers like that? <laughs> experience, young Padawan, experience. Experience. Okay, so there's that, you see that movement right there. That's as, as the foot's coming forward. Now this one over here, the back foot, the uh, not back foot, but the, the front foot that's in behind, the shoulder blade is going to come down, back here, come through, and I'm drawing through. The placement's going to be right in here. And it's, a, it's about halfway in between that I'm showing. Actually, I'm going to move this forward, the toes forward just a little bit. Okay. You'll get a little bit of the wrinkle, a wrinkling of the skin in here. Now, let's go back. I'm going to shade that in. Have I, YouTube question, have, ever been, have I ever visited the Saint-Hilaire Saint art shop in Paris? I have not. I went there today and was blown away. Well, if I ever make it to Paris again, which I'm sure I will, I will check it out. Um, Nala's mom is Serafina. That's right. I forgot about that. I have a tattoo of Serafina on my back. Thanks for animating such a great character, Anna, Aaron. Thank you. 
So here, if the shoulders are up, what's going to happen? The hips are going to go down, right? So let's drop the hips down a little bit. And so we're going to get, I'm, I'm probably, I'm definitely exaggerating this a bit. But what we're going to get is this kind of feel right here. I'm going to bring that down just a little bit. Right there. So here's the hips coming down. What's that, Dustin? It's so zen watching you work. Who needs Zoloft when Aaron is sitting down and teaching you? Oh, you mean I'm putting you to sleep, huh? <laughs> <laughs> hey, All right. This messenger here. <laughs> so here the and so the rib cage are going to lift up is going to lift up here. This is one of the things I love about um, four-legged, you know, mechan things that are mechanical. I love figuring out the physics because when you get the physics right. It just it feels like you've just created life. It's really cool. So what we're going to have here is as so this foot's come come back the front right foot, something has to replace it, and that's going to be our foot coming forward. So what are we going to have? We're going to have this foot coming this way, and the other thing too, and then here comes down, and look at that. It, it's not going to replace it perfectly, but it's going to be pretty darn close. We're going to pull that pelvis down just a little bit. Just a bit. Right now the lioness looks like she's shuffling. <laughs> yeah. Everybody's shuffling. All right. Man, remember that came? That song came out? All the dancing we did? Oh, my God. I know. Isn't that funny? It would not stop. <laughs> there was a there was a uh, a little bar near where we lived on the water. There was this bar that was on the water that had this great DJ, and we go there down there and have we'd all have dinner, all of us from the studio, and then we just dance. And so this foot here is going to come back, and we want to make sure it comes back the same distance as this foot. So it's going to come back about here, right about there. Okay. And so here, once again, making I want to, those hips are going to be turning. This hip's coming forward. This hip is going to be coming back in the background. So it's going to come back here, 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 and I'm going to bring the foot right about there. How long in the process of Lion King did you and the crew know was going to be huge? Remembering they say they didn't have much hope for it in the beginning and people wanted to do another Pocahontas movie. Yeah, you know what? We we didn't know until the movie was released. We knew it was special when we were making it. But it's not how... But we weren't sure how it was going to do. And uh, so, yeah, that, that's we just didn't know. Tendons coming down here, and let's color that in just a little bit, just so you can see that that's a background. So you can start to feel, you can see that up and down. Now what's happening here? Now the one thing I want to do is we're going to take, I'm, I'm just, what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to in between, you'll see what I'm going to do. Just to keep the volume right, I'm going to in between this head. I'm not worried about the placement right now. I'm going to I'm going to cut and paste it. Maybe someone already has, but with your experience in experimentation, what is your favorite animal to animate, and uh, what is the most fun? I love animating bears because of their size. They, uh, getting the size and the weight and all of that right is so much fun. So here, I'm animating the head rotating back. What are your views about Myron uh, Barnstone as an artist? I don't know Myron. I don't know who that is. Whoops, that's not what I want. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, Myron Barnstone, he's a Hollywood actor. Okay, so. Hold on one second. This, I'm just going to do this. 
So now, as as the um, as the as the head as the body's coming up, the head is going to rotate. I'll show you. I show you. The head's going to rotate down just a little bit, and it's going to start to come up. Just start to come up right about here, just like so. And let me get rid of that, and we'll go back to our pencil. So you can see it's coming up. Do you think you'll do a stream of a high action animation? Uh, I could do that. And here, as a, as the body comes down, here the the this is still coming up, right here. So I'm going to have that come up a little bit, and it's flattening out the tail a little bit. Boy, that's really messy. Let me clean that up. Just based on the name, would you like to work on the White Bear King? Yeah, it sounds pretty cool. <laughs> I'm the White Bear King. What's my favorite Hanna Barbera cartoon and why? Oh, I, I, you know, I don't know. Uh, probably Scooby Doo. I don't know because that, it's just that's what was on when I was a kid. I loved Super Friends too. I just loved it when I was a kid. When you animate dialogue for an animal, is it much different than if you were uh, doing a human talking? It's not much different. I, you know, when I'm animating, I'm going to bring this chest up a little bit more. When I'm animating dialogue for an animal, I'm thinking about it more uh, in Muppet terms. Although I'll give them lips and, and whatnot. But I do think of them more in Muppet terms. Yeah, I know you answered this one already at the early portion of the stream, but for the newcomers, do you prefer animating traditionally or digitally? Um, I prefer animating digitally because I just I like being able to play it back instantly. And I've got a, boy, I got a lot of questions coming. Holy uh, YouTube question: What are the two dots beneath the O and Brother Bear? I always wondered. They're just there because it looks cool. <laughs> really, that's all. <laughs> uh, YouTube question: I'm currently studying a three-year, uh, really expensive animation course, but what I want to do is concept art and character design. Do do I think I need to study in school for that? Thanks. Well, I think. It all takes discipline. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it depends on what you're, how good your teaching is. I mean, there's stuff you can find online. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what to tell you on that. Uh, yes, you need to be schooled. You need to, you need, you need just as much education in those areas as you would animation. Now, do you need to do it at a college? That's that's up to you. That I don't know. So here is, oh, the other thing, too, that I didn't do on this drawing, I want to have that serratus, the latissimus and serratus muscle in there. And I'm going to have that kind of in here. Okay, so now the head is starting to come up. Now, when we do our in-betweens, you're going to see more of a bow. I'm going to exaggerate the bob, but we're going to have more of a bob come up. Okay, so how are we doing on time, man? We've, we got, we're an hour into it. We've only done three drawings, so I gotta I gotta pick this up. I gotta pick up the pace. Pick so up the pace. pick up the pace. So I'm gonna create another drawing here. So our our keys are gonna be alternating, and let's jump back. And I don't want the one the drawing behind to be illuminated. I want that drawing to be illuminated. I'm gonna turn that off. So I'm gonna turn this up just a little bit so we can see it a little bit better. And we're gonna do the same thing that we did before. So I'm going to create uh, the same silhouette. So here we go. I'm creating the same, the same silhouette. But we're going to reverse our, our placement of everything. Now, because the head is turning through, the head is going to be the same. Because we're exactly halfway. It's, it's turning through on this piece right here. So it's not going to be any different. We're looking at it in perfect profile. 
So I'm just going to trace it back. This is one of the, the cheats you can get away with in, uh, in animating a profile. So when I buy a course from your website, uh, for how long can I access the content? Is it time limited or can I download it? or like? Yeah, you can download it right away. Uh, you can have access to it, as far as I know, forever. And if you if you become a member, you can have access to everything. And you can download everything. So here I'm going to draw through. I have to draw through. Here the, sh the shoulder comes down. Here everything comes down this way. All right. Shoulder comes down. Comes into the wrist. There's our foot there. Here it comes, and it's going up into this shoulder blade here, like so. What kind of brush is that, and uh, where can everybody get it? This, the brush on this? Yeah, the brush you're currently using. This is just one of the brushes in TV Paint. Oh, it's not a custom one? No, this is this is their their standard two two B two B brush. Oh, shrink. Shrink. Oh. It's right over here. You'll see a little bank of brushes come out, and it's this brush right over here. Okay, so real quick. So there's the, the foot coming back. You can see it pushing, pushing the body up. And here I've got the other shoulder coming through. Remember, keeping the same silhouette. And here the foot's coming through. Now... Remember I told you the feet turn in? So here, there's the dew claw coming through. And we're going to have this paw here, like so. Boom, boom, boom. So and that's about all you're going to see right there. We were... So like, oh, I need to, I need to pick up the pace. <laughs> pick up the pace? I can hardly keep up as it is. <laughs> Question: Have I seen the Mowgli movie? And what's my thought about it? It's funny you ask. <laughs> no, I have not seen the movie. Um, I actually worked on the movie. Um, I was one of the character designers. I didn't work on the wolves. I um I worked on uh, Bagheera. I worked with Andy Serkis, who was the director. And uh, I worked for about two months on the project. And they asked me to help with getting the characters uh, up and ready for um, so that they could get the mocap started. And um, their design, I'm trying to put this the right way, their design, the design that Andy Circus wanted was not realistic animals, which isn't, you know, that's more my, my bag. He wanted them pushed a little bit more differently so that they could match more with, um, the actors in the, in the mocap suits. It would, so it would work a little better, which I th it might work. I thought, I just thought it was a little strange. And so I had a little bit of difficulty working in that way. Um, I think, you know, I did a lot of, uh, I, like I said, Bagheera and, uh, um, Baloo. I really enjoyed working on Baloo. Well, you with bears at all? Yeah, and uh, and I'm I'm I hope they held on to the designs. I, I I the most work I did was Bagheera and Baloo, and I did a little bit of uh, the snake Ka. Um, I was working on Ka when ultimately we just said, you know what, I'm just going to go ahead and move on. And so uh, that's what we did. I haven't seen the film. I'm really anxious to see it. I'm glad he got to finish it. Um, I'm really anxious to see it on uh, Netflix. It's coming out on Netflix uh, in December. Oh, it is? Yeah. Great. So I'm really anxious to see that. Um, okay, so real quick. So here is our fourth key. So these are the four keys that we're going to be using. Okay, so here's the shoulder blade pushed way up. All right, so now as I 
click through these, you should be able to see a basic walk. Okay. Now, once again, I'm exaggerating all this. So when you see the final animation, this is all going to be very exaggerated. Okay. Um, but let's go ahead and start doing our breakdowns. <clears throat> so let's see here. I'm going to, I need to create a new, there we go. And I want to bring this back. And so now I've got my two keys. Now I'm doing real in-betweens, but they're going to be breakdowns. So once again, I'm going to, I'm going to hold off on the heads real quick. And the one thing I'm going to do is what I want to show you is let's do this. I want to bring the head down. I'm just going to I'm just going to in between it like this for now. I'm going to start with the head actually. So you can see it start to turn. And I'm not going to worry about this eye right now. I'm going to keep it right in the spot. And what's happening is it's starting to turn away from us. Like so. Oops. Like so. You can see that head starting to turn. Okay. Now what I want to do in the animation, the head is actually going to be coming down. So if we look at the, the, the green drawing, the action, because we got to remember his foot has just come down. So the head is following that foot and it's going to drop. We're going to create this overlapping action. So now if I scroll, you'll see the head comes down and it's going to come back up, comes down and comes back up, comes down and comes back up because that's going to be the foot is coming, is coming forward. You'll see what I'm talking about. So now what I want to do is we're in the process of bringing that leg up or bringing the neck of the body up that shoulder blade because it's taking the weight is going to push up. And so the body will go up first before the head does and then the head will follow. So that's why the head is still coming down. Okay. And here, I'm just going to animate this body and I'll draw the legs through. Body. YouTube comment. Membership is the way to go, everyone. <laughs> I went to Pratt, Manhattan, New York, and I learned more in my first three months with Aaron than I learned in two years there. <laughs> hey, now that is an awesome compliment. Right. Thank you. You know what? I... It's funny when I went to I went to Ringling College of Art and Design in Sarasota, Florida, and it was it was a really great experience. So don't get me wrong, but I uh, I remember thinking when I started at Disney uh, during my internship, um, I remember thinking, man, I you know I, I remember thinking I'm, I learned more there in the first two weeks than I had in the two years that I'd been at Ringling, and it and that wasn't really the case, but it was. I, I learned at a much, there was so much more concentrated information that I was getting at Disney, uh, where at Ringling, you know, it was, all, it was, you know, it was over several years and, uh, but I was getting almost the same amount of information at a much more accelerated pace. And that's why it felt like I was getting so much more information. But, um, but anyway, so here we go. So I'm going to, the foot here has got to be placed. There's the back foot. Coming forward. Are you wearing a t-shirt? We have snow here in Austria. <laughs> I live in Florida, baby. So 
So here's that foot coming back. Actually, I want to bring this around and this way a little bit. And if I draw through, that knee is going to come down. And we're going to come in here like this. Always draw through. I, you know, in order to remember. Remember. In order to get the anatomy right, the drawing right, always remember to draw through. All right, so, and once again, I want to remind you guys, if you are listening, um, our Black Friday sale, um, our Cyber Monday sale, is still, is still going on. So uh, I just want you to remember that. So here, the foot is coming down. Or the, the hips are coming down but here I want the tail to still continue to come up it still has that momentum just like the head so here I'm going to flatten that out just a little bit maybe a weird question but have you visited the Pirelli Forest Center in Florida no I don't know what that is. The Pirelli, what? What is it? Uh, Pirelli, uh, I think he's a, uh, um, someone in the, in the horse riding community. Oh, no. He has a center, I forgot exactly where it is in Florida, but. Okay, question regarding TV paint. Just bought TV paint today. Can you show how to select a small area and transform uh, a size? Watch you tutorials, but struggling with it. Oh, this is very simple. Let's say uh, we go, I'm going to grab this tool right up here. This is my transform tool. It's right next to the movie camera. I grab that. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm gonna let me back that up. I'm gonna grab my my uh, lasso tool with, with, with an S in it, okay? And I'm gonna slice a little piece right there. I just slice the head. Then I'm gonna go to the transfer, and look, I can make it bigger. I can make it smaller. I can do whatever I want. Let's say we want to make it smaller. Then I hit return, and boom, it's done. And I can go back to my pencil and I get rid of, I got to clear the selection and now I've got a smaller head. So that is how you do that. So really quick, um, there's our, you can see the, the tail is starting to move right. Now I got to finish off this in-betweens, <clears throat> these in-betweens. So what's happening? Well, as this foot comes forward right here, what's going to happen? Well, this foot here has got to lift up and get out of the way, right? So let's have this right here. I'm going to have it come back. Just, just, a, just a touch. Looks like the lion's dancing. <laughs> like a, almost like a running man kind of thing. And it's lifting off the ground. So for a very short beat, a very short beat, the cat will only be only have two feet on the ground. And this is part of that short beat. Right in here. No. Have you animated in harmony? I have not. In Tune Boom. So there it is right there. The foot is lifting off the ground right there. Do you ever plan on trying, um, at least trying the, uh, the other software just to, so you can get your own opinions on them? No, I don't plan on because TV Paint really works for me and uh, I don't, I don't want to throw my money around just to, just to try different software. So yeah, TV paint, um, I, I love TV paint. And so I'm just gonna stick with it. Uh, YouTube question, which live action remake are you excited for next year? Tim Burton's Dumbo, Guy Ritchie's Aladdin, or John Favreau's Lion King? Um, I gotta say I'm most excited about Lion King only because I worked on it, uh, probably. Um, and then I'm really, really excited about Dumbo. I love the emotion of Dumbo. I love that. I can't tell if John Favreau is doing a shot for shot of Lion King. If he's actually doing a shot for shot, I'll be disappointed because I really was hoping he would reinterpret it. Um, 
uh, because if you're doing shot for shot, then I really don't know what the reason, you know, what the point is. Uh, so, uh, anyway. Was he the one that did the original Lion King, or who, who was it that directed the original? The, uh, uh, the original Lion King. Oh, that was uh, um, uh, uh, Rob Minkoff and Roger Allers. Gotcha. Man, he caught me there for a second. My, my brain shorted up. <laughs> It, okay. It, 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 I think I heard a spark there for a second. <laughs> so here, I'm getting the muscles coming up. We got to get this rib cage coming up here. So here is our, and it looks like there's a lot of movement, and there is. Like I said, I'm exaggerating the movement. But here, now you can see there's our first little step right there. See that? Boom. Boom. And I'm really exaggerating that neck movement, but I want you to understand it. So now, as it comes forward and down, now we got to put our next in between right in here, and that in between is going to be the opposite of this in between. So what are we going to do? We're going to go one, two, three. That's our third drawing back. I'm going to turn this one off, and I'm going to turn this one off, and we're going to do the same thing that we did before. I'm just going to trace it back. Now I'm going to do the head a little bit differently. Actually, no, I'm going to turn this back on because I want to see where my in-betweens are going to go. That's about right. Turn that back off. There's our foot closest to us. the idea of an animation of wing, winged deers. Ooh, that sounds cool. Like flying deer? Yeah. I like that idea. Like a pegasus, but instead of a horse, it's a deer. Yeah. I, I, I'd, be, I'd animate that. I'd be into that. That'd be cool. Or what you can do is a very big bear with big wings. <laughs> So I'm just going to trace the silhouette right now. I'll come back and change this. Boop and boom. All right, so here, size wrinkle. We're going to get tissimus muscle going there. This is all coming up off of here. Now, when I'm sitting by myself, whoops, that's not where that's going to be. When I'm sitting by myself, this hip is going to be down here. When I'm sitting by myself and doing this, I'm moving quite a bit more quickly. I'm trying to draw through, I'm imagining the knee here coming at twitch question how did you guys uh, animate the burst of wildebeest scene on the Lion King was individual animated or was it some trick that was one of the first times we ever used a computer to do character animation uh, those wildebeests were computer animated and the way that was done was Ruben Aquino who was an well, Ruben Aquino was the supervising animator of Adult Simba. He went on to the movie before everybody else. And Ruben put together basically a Bible of animal locomotion. He really studied. Uh, Ruben is just an amazing animator. Um, one of his great accomplishments was um, uh, Ursula in the, uh, in the Little Mermaid. He animated her. And he's just an incredible animator. And so he provided this Bible for everybody on uh, animal movement. And so one of the creatures that he covered was the wildebeest. And so the CG department took his animation of a run cycle of a wildebeest and created it. 
and then they put a few variations to vary it up and they uh that belly around and then they created some herding parts to the program to you know so that they wouldn't run apart and they wouldn't run into each other they just kind of move and then that's how they created the actual uh, stampede so one of the first times we ever used uh, C CG uh, from a character standpoint in our films When you do animation of mythical creatures like dragons, how much do you pull from real known anatomy versus creating your own? Um, I, I, I create my own based on known. So if that makes any sense to you, I create my own based on known anatomy. So I'll take known anatomy and then I'll push it and pull it. And I understand the physics of, of real anatomy, what it's supposed to do. Uh, Twitch uh, question, should that dew cloud be perhaps a little lower? I used to draw them further up like that till I realized it was wrong. Yes, you're absolutely right. I put it up high because I'm trying to get that foot to come up. And, um, and it's not coming up yet. So you're absolutely right. It's going to be back here. Right about there. Thank you for the note. What is your favorite museum in Paris and why? The um, the Orsay. I just love the Impressionist uh, section that they have there. The The Louvre is too big for my tastes. Uh, the Orsay is um, just absolutely stunningly beautiful. Orsay is the one that uh, we all went to when, when we all went together that one year, right? Well, no, we went to the Louvre together. I never went... We, we never went to the Louvre. Well, then we maybe... Walked, we walked past the Louvre. Talk about for Mom's 40th trip. Yeah. Yeah, we, we always walked past it, but we never went in it. Oh, okay. I know we went to a museum, but I can't remember the, the name of it. Right. It wasn't the Louvre. Then it was the Orsay, because that's the only other one we went to. So we're bringing that head down and it's starting to turn. Whoops, I'm doing that the wrong way. There's the head right here. How did Tom Bancroft uh, get to direct Mul Mulan so young? Tony Bancroft. Was it Tony? Yeah, Tony Bancroft directed Mulan. Let me get these again. Let me. I got to get this right again. That's one, two, three, one, two, three, turn, there we go. And let me turn that off. Here we go, turn that there. I'm getting a little confused, don't worry about me. And I'll turn that back on. So here is the, f comes back like this. Uh, how did he get to and to direct it so young? I don't know. I mean, we all we were all pretty young when we started when we got our projects. I was twenty nine when I started directing Brother Bear. Um, we all worked really hard. I got to say that, and I'm something that's something I'm I'm actually pretty proud of. We all worked really hard. Uh, we were all very young and eager at that studio, and we wanted. We wanted, we wanted to make movies. I just remember that. Okay, so, real quick. So there's our, uh, Nick says, well that explains, it. he's much older than Tom. <laughs> <laughs> he and Tom are the same age. For those of you that don't know, Tom and Tony, uh, Tony was uh, one of the co-directors of Mulan, and Tom uh, animated Mushu. They're twin brothers. Identical twin brothers. So here's our, we've got a basic walk now. So if I put these on fours, one, two, three, four, 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 no, actually eight, sorry. 
eight because this should be a 32 frame cycle we're gonna get this on eights oh no I was wrong <laughs> yeehaw and put it on four 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 Still going to be off, but I want to see. There we go. I could I could get it down. We could do more. I might I might be missing. Oh, I'm I know I'm I'm missing one more another breakdown. No. I'm missing the other breakdowns. That's what's wrong. Uh -oh. I, yeah, I've only got the one breakdown. I haven't done the other breakdown yet. So let's put these back. I'm going to put these all back. Boop. I've I've been talking so much. I I, keep, I lose track of where I'm at. Okay, so what have we done so far? We've got our keys, and we've got two of our breakdowns. Now we have, we've only got six drawings. We need to have eight drawings for our, our keys and breakdowns. So what we've done is this breakdown right through there, you can see that, but now we need the breakdown between the, uh, where is it, right here, we've done that breakdown. Now we gotta do it between these two, right here. So let's open that up. We're gonna add a drawing there. Boop, it's like that. Tony is the older by like 10 minutes, I believe. I might be true. I know Tony is older. Uh, YouTube comment. I think a layout and perspective course would be great too, Aaron. Well, it's funny you mentioned that. Um, we are going to be doing a layout course. Let me turn this off. I want to get rid of that ground plane. It's distracting. By the way, will you go see the Grinch this holiday? Yes, I probably will. Okay, so let's, let's, uh, enough of the jitter, jibber jabber. Enough. I'm going to, uh, once again, I got to keep that neck separate because we're going to have some separate things happening. But the, that leg is going to, the, the shoulder blade is going to start coming down. The back is going to start coming down as the hips come up. Whoops. There we go. Keeping it all nice and simple. Now, as this foot comes forward, right here, I'm going to have it actually reach out. Like so. Your brother is also in animation, right? Do you think animation runs in the blood? Uh, I don't know that it runs in the blood. We were just both interested in the same thing. I, I got an internship at Disney, and he got an internship at Disney soon after. So uh, I know we were we were you know we, we were both interested in art. We both went to Ringling College of Art and Design. Uh, so whether or not it runs in the blood, I don't know about that. But uh, but we both love it. My brother's a storyboard, art, a storyboard artist now, up in Seattle, and animator. All right, so here I'm going to have that reach. He's reaching, reaching, reaching. See that nice, you know, trying to keep that nice and simple right there. And that chest is coming down as the belly goes up a little bit. Twitch question. Hi, I'd love to support other Disney animators. Are there are there any that I recommend? Disney animators. Well, um, Glenn Keane was probably the best. He's probably the best contemporary Disney animator. I mean, there's a whole bunch of great Disney animators out there. I'm not sure I know what you mean by support them. If you're talking about them doing what I'm doing, um, I don't know of anybody that's doing what I'm doing, actually, unless Nick knows. Um... Tom Bancroft, Tom Bancroft is a great animator uh, that's doing what I'm doing, and you could support him. Uh, Taught by a pro, he has a, a site called Taught by a Pro. That's really cool. Okay, so here we have our foot going back, and I'm actually going to have this foot stretch a little bit more. I'm going to keep it on the ground. 
but I've got to just barely have it on the ground. So I'm going to stretch that foot way back. See what I'm doing? Just like I did up here, I'm stretching there. Here the foot's going to be stretched. It's still going to be touching the ground. Right there, just like that. Touching the ground, stretching way back. I want a nice kind of straight right through, woof, right through the body. See there? Just like that. Here, the tail starting to come up, but here I want the tail to continue to come down, which it is doing. So I'm going to just in between that there. So you started to fill in the in between. You were filling in the in betweens, baby. We're going to get a little overlap in that tail. And we're almost about an hour and a half in so far. Yeah. We got the keyframes. Got the. Uh... Yeah, we're going to have we're going to have these these keyframes done pretty quickly. Just a little bit. I know this is taking a little while, but I really want you guys to see what it, you know what we think about when we're doing this. Now. The reason I'm holding off on the head is because I want you to see in the same way that we overlap the head here, as we go through this in-between, the head's going to continue to come up on our on our in-between. So right here, I actually want it to come up here. Like so. But one of the things I'm going to do is I'm just going to straight in between it like I did on the last one right here and then I'm going to reposition it <clears throat> did you already answer that question? yeah okay. yep the twitch one yeah uh, support Disney other manners yes I did yes sure I did alrighty are the legs a snitch too long they, they could be. They might be a little too, too long. A lot of times when I'm when I'm uh, doing a demonstration and talking about walk cycles, I get so passionate about the leg placement, I really overdraw the legs. So yeah, they're they're actually they're not too bad. They're not too bad. They're a little bit long, just to, like you said, a smidge. Yeah, thanks for noticing. Okay, so there we go. So now what I'm going to do, what am I going to do? I'm going to take this piece of head and I'm going to bring it up a little bit and I'm going to bring it this way just a touch. So we get a little overlap in that chin movement. Hit return. Go back to our pencil tool, get rid of our selection. So we get something like this. Well, let me just color that in a little bit and we'll have there. All right. Now the other thing too I haven't done yet. So you can feel that head moving forward as the as this foot comes forward. You see it pushing. You can feel it pushing right there. Now let's get this foot, the placement, right. Did you like Mary Poppins? The old Mary Poppins? Is the new one out yet? I don't know. I don't think it's out yet. But um... I liked I liked the old one because Dustin and his sister, as children, used to watch that movie ten times a day. I think that's an understatement. Yeah. <laughs> I absolutely loved that movie. And. Um... I'm actually rather excited for this one, for uh, Mary Poppins Returns. Yeah. Okay, so. Now, you can feel, now you can feel our walk right there. Feel that head movement, the up and down of the hips, the up and down of the shoulders. Right there. Now, right here, this one here, I want to push 
that shoulder blade just a little bit so you start to feel it as it pushes up. See that right here? That's when it pushes up into here. Uh, we got a question from Nick. Twitch question. Hello, can you explain what you're calling a breakdown? Sorry. Uh, English is not my first language. So a breakdown is not really a straight in between. We have, we have four keys and we have to break those keys down for the drawings that go in between. Now a breakdown is, it's kind of a key on its own, but it's not because it's really dependent on those four original keys that we created, but it's got some movement of its own that goes outside of maybe the arcs or, or, or the timing of those initial keys. So that becomes a breakdown. And it's after we create those breakdowns that we start creating the in-betweens. And I'll show you that when we get to that next. So what do we need to do now? Well, we need to create one that, that the next in-between actually goes, or the breakdown actually goes on the end, okay? That's going to be right after this drawing because that has to reach forward, remember? So I'm going to create a new drawing there. And it has to be all the way back to this drawing, which is one, two, three, four, four drawings back. Right there. And what are we going to do? We are going to first of all, I'm going to knock that up just a little bit. We're going to do the silhouette. Right? And uh, Nick has something to say. Oh! Nick says, Borja Montoro did some of the 2D animation in the new Mary Poppins. Yes, they did. Actually, it was... Uh, Duncan Studios. Duncan Studios, Ken Duncan, who is the supervising animator of Jane from Tarzan and did some of some beautiful animation of uh, a lot of female characters through the years. I think he did quite a bit of Belle and Beauty and the Beast. Uh, actually, I, what am I doing? I'm, I'm talking and I'm just tracing. <laughs> Jeez. Um, uh, so and Borja is a great, uh, great animator. So uh, let me just do this first. So we're going to go here. So we got this pushing way up, which means we got this shoulder coming back like so. I want to make sure I keep the volume right. So I'm going to thicken this arm just a little bit as this foot comes back. There we go. So remember, we're copying the silhouette. We're just doing the opposite breakdown. This is a really great cheat if you're working on something in profile. It only works for when you're working in profile. But you can take this information and turn it three quarter, you know, in your head. And, you, you, you know, if you have to draw animated character walking towards you, three quarter. After the... Acting for animation courses done. What other animation course courses can you do in the future? You know, I, I, I don't, I'm not sure. That one I have to think about. There are a few things that I'd like to do. I'd like to do a course on really broad animation. I'd like to do a course on animating to music. Uh, specifically animating to music. Um, there's, a, there's a few things I'd like to, to hit. Uh, YouTube questions. Sir, with all my respect, I want to ask... For your top three animators of all time, the animators who are your mentors. Well, Glenn Keane was my mentor. He's probably my top pick for animators of all time. Um, and then, um, uh, let me think here. Uh, well, Frank Thomas, Ollie Johnston. See, I can't pick three. Oh, what am I doing? I'm tracing again. See, when I start talking, I start tracing. <laughs> oh, what the hell? Oh, what the hell? So the foot comes back here. There we go. There's a knee. Um, let's see. 
Oh, there's a lot. There's a, <laughs> there's a lot. There's a lot of great animators out there. Frank Thomas and Ollie Johnson, though. Milk Call. Milk Call is probably my favorite of all time. You know, alive now, Glenn Keane, because he, he, he really just gave me so much opportunity as a young animator. And the way he instills passion uh, is just incredible. Uh, but Milk Call was probably my favorite all-time animator. Of all time and I just happen to have a milk call drawing right over there on my side I'm not gonna grab it right now because I want to continue drawing well, one of my personal favorite uh, animation stories is the uh, the Yao story that you told uh, on the little line panel with Alex oh yeah <laughs> how he inspired me to do the the change yeah yeah well hey, that's how, that's how just good collaboration stay, stay. Steif. 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 Oh, no, no. That's not how Yao would punch. He would kiss his fists. So here we have a Periscope question. I feel Rescuers Done Under is overlooked for style, animation, quality. Any thoughts or inside stories? Well, um, funny you say that. Funny you ask that. Uh, the Rescuers Down Under was my very first uh, feature feature and so uh, a, a feature that I worked on as as an animator as a full-fledged animator and so um, yeah, I don't know I don't really have anything I can tell you about that other than it was I agree with you I thought it was a beautiful film um, real quick I gotta I'm gonna copy this copy that that one and I'm gonna paste it right there so now I can, in between, I can turn on that drawing and that drawing and actually get, turn that one off. And I can get the in-betweens looking right here. Oh, I thought you were going to say you were going to save your work. Oh, this automatically saves. Oh, good. Yeah. Don't worry. <laughs> How many drawings did you have to animate each day on a movie like Brother Bear? Each day? Yeah. Oh. Like, did you have a daily quota? We didn't really have a daily quota. So how, like, on average, how many drawings would you do in a day? I don't know. Or like, say, for, say Lion King. For something. animation, probably be 100 drawings in a day. 50, uh, 50 drawings in a day. 50 to 100, something like that. Depending on how long you're at it. Yeah. So here, what I want is the head to come up. Just got the annual membership. There's a treasure trove of inspiring and helpful content. Thanks, Aaron, for making me a better artist. Looking forward to many, many more. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> I am looking forward to seeing what you produce. <laughs> there we go. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here the ear is going to start turning forward. You're going to start to see a little bit of this ear coming back, like so. There. All right. Uh, Aaron, YouTube comment. Did you notice that the rhinos in the new Lion King trailer were Indian rhinos and not African rhinos? I did not notice. I actually didn't notice any rhinos. Um, that's funny you say that. Uh, yeah, there's a couple. I, I always notice things like that. Um, like the, the, I don't know if you guys have seen the, the ballad of Buster Scruggs. But there's a scene with Tom Waits that where he's he's got this relationship with all these animals out in the forest as he's digging up this gold and there's an owl that he has this relationship with and it's actually a European owl that they used that kind of but no one else would know that. Um, question: Do did you ever have to keep your kids from drawing on stuff that I drew? You know what? Not really. My kids didn't draw that much. You guys didn't really draw that much when you were young. When we got older, we did. Yeah, but no, they never... I don't. I, I think there was one or two times that you guys drew on some stuff. Their head, their head's growing a little bit there, but I'm not going to worry about it right now. Yeah, but it wasn't like... 
like, do you feel like I broke more mom stuff? Because <laughs> you broke know, your she, glass. Her stained glass stuff. But yeah. I don't think I ever really drew anything over your stuff I, that I remember. Yeah. Um, so here we've got these four. We're going to put them on fours. Is there any way to see the Mulan panel from CTNX? Like, did anybody record it? Or? I don't know that anyone recorded it. So let's play this. And now you can see our very rough walk. Uh, you can see our tail is moving up and down. i got to color that in. Our head is turning back and forth. It's a little clunky, but I've been talking, so give me a break. <laughs> <laughs> and you can see the big thing, too, is, you know, really feel those shoulder blades. I want you to feel that weight, you know, the, the hips going up and down, the stretch of the arms, the stretch of the legs. You can really feel that, you know, we've got it on fours. And uh, I'm going to do one more pass through this uh, over the next hour. Um, and we'll get everything in between. And uh, we'll get it on the twos and then we'll call it a day. But once again, I want to remind you guys that our sale is still going on. Our Cyber Monday sale is still going on. We've got over 40% off all of our lessons, uh, $75 off of our premium membership. And that premium membership will get you access to everything and you can download it. It's yours forever. And not only that, you get anything anything new we create over the next year, you get that as well. Uh, that membership is good for a year. So, uh, but anyway, here's our walk cycle. And, you know, when you're thinking about all those little different mechanics and you can get them in to the movement, then you can start to feel... Like it's real. We're thinking about the weight. We're thinking about the shoulder blades, the the back and forth of the head, the up and down of the hips, all of that kind of stuff. The stretch of the skin between the belly and the thigh, the up and down of the tail, all of that. When you can get it to work in unison, then you start to have something that feels realistic. Uh, Twitch question. How long does Disney teach you how to draw? Well, when I was at Disney, I was, I was with Disney for 21 years, and I was learning... I was always learning. I never stopped learning. And uh, so that, you know, that was a big deal there. Um, it was always part of, uh, it, was always, it was always, you know, we, we were always learning from each other. We never stopped learning. So there's that. Um, the other thing, too, is I'm going to just go ahead and just go move straight forward on the in-betweening here. And um, uh, so I'm not going to do... Any more tracing back? I just do it on the on the keys and the breakdowns, and then then I just do regular regular in betweening, and it'll start to feel much more organic. Uh, one more time before I start to draw. A YouTube question: What's the most advanced coloring you've seen in a traditional animated movie? Looking at the monster whale and Pinocchio included some backgrounds. Oh, it blows me away. You know, I it's hard to say. I I would think if you look at the um, what was the name of it? The, the springtime, the Fantasia 2000, where the volcano erupts. Oh, yeah. That's some of the most complex stuff I've ever seen. Um, and if you're looking at something outside of traditional animation, Roger Rabbit, man, I think some of those had, I think, 13 different passes, different layers per character. Oh, really? Oh, it's, uh, yeah, it was crazy, depending on the lighting. You know, to get it to match the live action lighting. Yeah, that's crazy. I could be wrong. It might might not be thirteen, but it was a lot. YouTube question: Hi, Aaron and Dustin. Ever Hi. been to Ever been to Belgium? Uh, ever heard of the country? <laughs> yes, I've heard of Belgium. <laughs> yes, I've heard of Belgium, but I've never been. Oh, the only time I've been overseas was to Paris. Actually. Yeah, overseas to Europe was Paris. Yeah, you went to Paris when you were a kid, when you took mom for her 40th birthday. Yeah. I actually lived out the country, but that was Canada, so. Canada. Canada. The great white North, eh? Yes. Yes. So here I'm just going to kind of, I'm going to very quickly just sloppily go through these in-betweens because I'm, we're taking quite a while. But you're going to see this will break down very nicely. And we're going to get... Now I'm doing in-betweens. 
Animating as a career is very mentally and physically demanding. How do you personally deal with the stress of it? Um, I love to draw. So it's, it, you know, I, I love what I do. I love animation. So to me, it wasn't, I mean, it was stressful, but it wasn't, it wasn't so stressful that you couldn't take it. So I, um, I just loved what I did. There's our in between right in here. Foot's coming forward. Here, the foot's coming back. Now it's disappearing, so I got to imagine where that knee is going to be. It's right, right about in here. I'm going to place the foot right here. Bring this back here, like so. So how did you get the, um, during the production of uh, Lion King, how did you get the uh, reference for your lion characters? Oh, well, we didn't get reference. We learned how to draw, um, we learned how to draw lions over a, a period of several months, and we an really analyzed their movements a lot. And did they, bring, um, did they bring in like uh, real real cubs and real lions and whatnot into yeah, the room? Yeah, exactly. And so we that's where we really learned how to draw them. And then um, and then we just we, we animated that stuff from our heads. Was there actually a room? Um, this is actually my my own personal question. Sure. Because um, I remember seeing images uh, like the videos of you guys all huddled around the um, the young. The young lion cub. Yeah, it was animated. one of the sound stages. Oh, it was one of the sound stages. Yep. So you never really had like a specific room for the drawing. You just kind of like let's let's use this room here. Yeah, exactly. Gotcha. So I'm just drawing the silhouette. I'm just in betweening the silhouette right here. And where did you usually get the? Um, uh, like, did they all come from a from a, a zoo nearby? Uh, uh, so depend on yeah, yeah. They were um, like uh, exotic animal trainers and that sort of thing. Gotcha. A lot of them were. I'm just really quickly because I've I've missed some of the latissimus muscles. Aaron, YouTube question: Do you, did you ever ink or do cleanup? Yes, I started. I started in cleanup. I started as an assistant animator uh, in cleanup. I was the assistant to Mark Kausler. On Roger Rabbit. How many drawings are we at so far? Uh, this is our tenth drawing. I'm sorry, this is our ninth drawing. So now you can see we're just basically smoothing out that action. Just smoothing out that action. That's what we're doing right now. So we're going to just fly through this. We're going to get it to 18 drawings. That'll be an 18 drawing walk cycle on twos. Now the the walk cycle that you saw behind me when we started the stream, that was a 32 drawing, or 36 or whatever I can't remember. Anyway, that was all on ones. For the bear and the hair commercial, um, besides the actual 2D animation aspect, was there anything else you um, you did on that project? <clears throat> no, I didn't do any of the stop motion. I didn't do any of the model building or anything like that. I um, I designed the characters, so I was responsible for designing all the animals first, and then um, and then I animated the bear and the hare, and, uh, and then all the other animals were animated by um, 
my friend Dom Carolla and Darko Cesar and a few other uh, Aaron um, Oh shoot, Aaron! I'm sorry. I forgot. If you're watching, I forgot your last name. Or no, Hum Humstead. Sorry, I think I said it right. Um, but we had a we had a pr really good crew of people that uh, helped out on that. Really great artists, great cleanup artists. And it, was, a... and it was a lot of them were like ex Disney people. You know, was, we were all a lot of us were ex Disney people. So it was really cool to be able to work on a project together again. Questions? You didn't do a scribble pass on this. <laughs> no, I didn't do a scribble pass on this. I kind of animal locomotion. I kind of know pretty well, so I don't need to do a scribble pass. What's a scribble pass again? It's just it's literally that. I just scribble it out, oh, so okay. you just kind of find it. Kind of like a thumbnail. Yeah. Gotcha. And uh, the other. Uh... Did you already answer that one? Or? How many animators and assistants worked in Brother Bear? Um, I think there was about 360 artists all together uh, and technicians and that sort of thing. Um, as far as... I'm going to actually lift this up just a little bit more. Um, as far as strictly animators and assistants, I think it was about 40 animators and maybe 10 assistants. Be 50 altogether. I could be wrong, but that seems right to me. So I'm just gonna just gonna throw the shape in there because I want to move through here. So you can feel that movement coming forward. Uh, sorry to ask. Uh, I haven't watched enough Beeline Reference. I've seen some videos of cats pressing their ankle to the ground. Yes. Any thoughts on when and why a cat would use the whole of the foot rather use the ball? Is this a maturity thing? Like kittens may tend to do it more? Or Well, well they won't walk that way. But they will get that, like if they're scooting up like or, or uh, uh, stalking prey, they'll sometimes they'll get it all underneath so they can spring better. You know, that sort of thing. But they won't. Um, they won't actually walk like a bear walks on it you know, with his ankle on the ground, his heel on the ground, I should say. But a cat won't walk with its heel on the ground. Um, they'll do that when they're getting ready to, to spring. So here you can see. Oh, that's a long one. You can see this movement. Now you can see our movement getting nice and fluid. But it can't be fluid until we have those keys. So it's so important to get those keys right. Question. Harry, and a lot of old Disney animators were fine artists first before coming to Disney. I'm thinking of going down the same path. A fine art academy nearby has eight years part-time course. Not sure if it's the right decision or should I stick with online courses. Any advice would be great. Thanks. You know, I, I can't. I can't say which is going to be better for you because I just don't know first of all I don't know what the if it's a decent school I don't know how you learn um, yeah it's, it's interesting I mean for me I was a fine artist to, you know, I was an illustrator first before I became an animator and it really depends on where your passion is if your passion is animation then just get into animation if you want if you feel a burning desire to paint and you know, do that, then do that as well. Um, but as far as doing that, you know, with the, with the ending desire to be an animator, I'm not sure that that's necessarily the right way to go because you're just you're just pushing off the inevitable, the inevitable, which is you eventually becoming an animator, right? So I don't, I'm not sure what to tell you other than follow your heart. You know, you got to just follow your heart. color in that tail and the neck there we go so now you can see see how that head follows it follows the the direction of the body 
it happens everything happens a little bit like the the overlap of the tail is coming after oh I'm getting a little too much there that shouldn't be that shouldn't happen there I'm gonna change that that tail that overlap should be in here there same with this one right there I'm gonna bring that down so right about in here many people are commenting Steven Hillenberg the creator of Spongebob just died happened during the stream Wow I didn't know that holy moly did I ever meet him no I've never met him well let's uh, let's dedicate this dedicate this walking uh, walk cycle to him How do you define weight on different creature animations, like big cats or small cats or elephant body mechanics? Well, you really, it, it's, it, a lot of it is gut. A lot of it is just knowing the physics. Um, when I'm animating an elephant, an elephant, you know, they walk surprisingly uh, daintily, if, I, if that's a right word. They, um, they walk very carefully. They're very sure-footed. They walk very slow and deliberate. It's not like they're like boom, boom, pounding their weight around. So they're not as heavy looking when you animate them as you might imagine. Um, now a bear, they can be very lumbering, especially a big bear that's ready for, you know, the den at the window you know, it's all fattened up they you can see the fat jiggle and they they really pound their their feet as they walk you can really feel their weight and so it really you know you have to study the animal um you know like i was saying earlier in the in the in the um in the uh stream that you know animating a lion like we're doing here is a lot different than animating a house cat you know just because of you know even though the movements are similar um here we go the uh i'm gonna go through this right here the uh the weight is different so you're going to get a different effect so here um i just wanted to show you you can see that foot's turned in a little bit like so Uh, was there, Aaron, YouTube question, was there ever a project you worked on that you didn't enjoy as much as others? I would have to say Pocahontas. Now, I love Pocahontas and I love the, the finished product, but um, it was very difficult, very contained project to work on. Uh, and so it, it was, um, we weren't able to go as broad. And I love doing broad animation. And so that was a little bit more difficult for me. Uh, so Poca Pocahontas was probably my least favorite film to work on, but I th I'm very proud of how it came out. Uh, it was just it was just difficult. Um, so if that makes sense. Uh, hi, Aaron. You have a great head of hair. Thank you. <laughs> my little brother is already losing his at 18. <laughs> Any tips? Yeah, wear a hat. Wear a hat. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. You know what? You should ask my friend Jim Jackson. A lot of people don't know. Jim Jackson was the 11th man to walk on the moon. <laughs> <laughs> Jim Jackson is a uh, one of the most incredible animators in the world. He's anima an animator at Blue Sky Studios and started losing his hair around the age of 22? When we were all working at Disney, and uh, now he's shaved bald and looks like a mean sob, and he, uh, but he's the nicest guy in the world, and very accomplished at his craft. Look him up, Jim Jackson, what are you gonna bring animator. In for uh, for a lesson video. 
Oh, we are. We're going to bring him in for sure. <laughs> no, we are. I'm serious. I, I swear, like, halfway through the video, uh, uh, at least one of the videos, you should just walk around like, oh, hey, just wanted to thank you for being part of this. And, guys, Jim Jackson here. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. How do you feel about using real animals in movies? Uh, how do I feel about using real animals in movies? As far as what? Like a live action movie? I yeah. Wouldn't. I think if they're treated well, then yeah. I mean, I don't know how else you're supposed to do it. And the line you're currently animating is a female line, right? Yes. I mean, we could, we could throw a mane on it, like a, 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 a small mane, and you know, it could make it a, an adolescent male. Do you have a show reel of your movie content? I do, you know I've never put the show, put together a show reel. You know after Mulan, um, I became a director after Mulan and didn't have to. I wasn't animating after that, and so I never really put together a show reel. I, even after I left Disney, I, I stayed uh, directing uh, until you know, I was directing right up until I kind of left the studio world and started doing what we're doing now. So I've never really had to put together a show reel. So now you can see that movement. Just feel that? Feel it? Feel it? Right there. Nick's got a question for you. Hey, Nick. Hi. How long, on average, does it take Disney to finish a full movie? On average, it takes five years from start, from concept to finish. All right, there we go. There's that first movement. If I turn this off, you can see it a little cleaner. There's that step. It all starts with those keys. You got to get those keys right. If you don't have the keys right, then your the rest of a movement is going to be off. It's going to be off. But we've got one, two, three, four, five, six more drawings to go, and we're going to have this baby licked. Six more drawings. Uh, we've been at this for two hours. Normally, I can really fly through this and get a, a walk cycle done in about an hour and a half. But uh, I'm not used to talking so much. I mean, this is rather impressive, the fact that you... I heard you should submit rough art and sketches in a portfolio, but how rough is too rough? Well, I mean, you want to show... You don't want, you don't want rough to equal sloppy. You don't want sloppy drawings. You just want... They don't have to be clean, pristine drawings. That's all. You just have to find that right balance. Yeah, it's... it's you know... A rough drawing is a drawing that's just, it shows the confidence in your line work, but it, you know, it, you just don't, I see a lot of people when I, I tell them to loosen up and draw rough, they just start drawing like scribbly and messy. And that's not what it means. It, it means, there we go. It means to, uh, I'm going to have the foot flip up a little bit. There we go. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> it just means to uh, draw with confidence, I guess. Got another question? Up here? Huh? What do I think of Proko? Proko's a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> Proko is awesome. Do I recommend him for his anatomy? Yes, the guy's brilliant. Proko and I are good friends. Proko is going to be here actually in March. And oh, we're, yeah, yeah he, and we're going to do some recording right here in my studio. Sweet. Yep. No, Proko's awesome. And yes, I do recommend his anatomy. Hi, Aaron. You are awesome. Will you visit India sometime? Yes, we are going to go to India. I'm not sure when, but uh, we will make it to India. I've only been to India once. I went to Delhi and really enjoyed it. And, um, uh, I would love to make it back again. So watch this front foot. See how it comes forward and that place. I'm placing it. See how it. Places. I'm placing. Place. Pla <laughs> place. <laughs> That's what you said, places. places. I'm placing it. You're, you're Australian there for a second. Place. You don't let anything go. Nope. <laughs> I'm 
places. Places. But watch that foot. See how I'm placing it? I'm placing it. Placing it. <laughs> Love it. There it is. So you can feel mm. that. And and once again, once you, if you know the anatomy well enough, and if you know the movement well enough, you don't need to always have live action reference. I, obviously, you can see here, we didn't have any live action reference, you know, as we as we work this out. Um, we're just going off of the anatomy that I know and the movement that I know and and kind of playing common sense when it comes to the physics. So what videos are you going to shoot with Proko? Proko is going to be in the studio with me as I take you through my process in how I do some of my charcoal work. We might do some oil painting too. I'm not sure yet. Hi, I met you at CTN this month. Is it possible to work for an animation studio from home via freelance work? Absolutely. They do it all the time now. Yep, absolutely. So here I'm going to have that foot kind of drag this way. What See it pick up? Picking up? Oh, is that from <laughs> Go no. ahead, Dustin. Huh? Go ahead. Uh, what if you want to move this vlog cycle from left to right on the screen? What would be the process you will go with? Um, I, I would, I would repeat the drawings, pegging them along, and just planting the feet. If you notice, the feet slide because we're animating it in place. So if you peg everything according to where the feet are placed, then it'll move across the screen at just the right pace. Boy, we're getting there. And I've got I've got a course on my website, and I'm going to be updating it this year on four-legged locomotion. So I, I also cover runs and trots in the same way that I'm covering this right now. Now, if you get my animal drawing courses like big cats, wolves, coyotes and foxes, uh, horses... Um, Part, every part of every one of those courses, I cover locomotion. And I talk about the locomotion of the animal in the same way that I'm talking about it here. So um, if, if you are interested in any kind of animal drawing um, that I have on my course, you'll get, the, the uh, like I said, the locomotion like this as well. Okay, so here's that. You can feel that walk. Feel that head turn. And it's reacting to the movement of the body. The shoulder blades pushing up and coming and relaxing. The hips moving back and forth. The back legs are always a little stiffer than the front. Right now, the complete animation course, I want to tell you guys, uh, Nick is reminding me, the complete animation course is $75 off. So if you want to buy just the animation course, you can get the complete one and it's 75 bucks off. I'm telling you, the sale that we have going on, this is the biggest sale of the year. So you won't make your, you won't save any more uh, the rest of the year than you will today. It's really big. It's really, really big. Did I already ask uh, on what kind of videos you're planning on filming with Proco when he comes in, in the town? Yeah. Okay. And then, um, and as far as if you, if you get the animation drawing bundle, that bundle, because it, it, it's a whole bunch of our of the animal drawing courses, if you get the whole bundle, it's $100 off. And it's, oh, I, I think it's, pro, I, 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 Nick will be able to tell me, but I think it's pretty close to, I don't know, 50 hours, 30 or 40 hours of instruction, I think. I can't remember. At least seven. <laughs> it's at least seven. It's at least seven hours of instruction. No, but my animal courses are very thorough. Um, I get very, very deep into them. I notice you place the foot flat rather than a banked concat. Yes, and this one I did only because if I did this on ones, um, I probably would get it a little bit more of a banked contact. So, it, like this, 
I just don't want it to feel like it's too slow because if I did this one right here for the person that's asking that it would be this drawing that would be a little bit more of a bank but if I leave, put that at a bank well I guess I probably could you might catch it let's just try it because a bank contact is like this you're gonna it's it's basically catching the right side of the foot first You don't have reference for this? I thought you were drawing Dustin. <laughs> <laughs> so it comes down and places like that. And actually, this foot here would then become this. And that's Achilles, if you can hear him. My dog. So that comes down. I'm pushing that just a little bit more. And then it places down. That's that's the that's the edge of the foot, and, and they do kind of touch with the edge of their foot. It's just gonna feel. I think it's gonna feel a little slow, but we'll see. We will see. Right here, I'm gonna definitely flatten the foot. So I'm just gonna squash it right out. Animal drawing is a bundle. Uh, is one hundred dollars off? YouTube comment. I got a I got a challenge for you one day. Animate a car. <laughs> No. <laughs> How about no? <laughs> no, I could. Uh, I don't just. I'm not into animating mechanical stuff. Does Proko do animal anatomy? No. No. But he's a, a human anatomy god. <laughs> <laughs> How do you manage uh, the timing of animation? It's all, it's just going to be, it, it takes time and experience. And a lot of it's feel. You just have to feel it. What do you suggest for a Wacom with TV Paint if Cintiq 22 is out of, out of budget? Um, like out of the budget range at all? Yeah. Uh... Uh, that's a tough one. Uh, I, I I would save up longer. <laughs> save up longer. Because I, I really recommend if you're gonna if you're gonna do digital art and you're gonna do it regularly and you're in it's something that you're gonna continue on with, then g get the right equipment and a, a Cintiq is the right equipment. Sorry, this foot here is hidden, so I gotta kind of visualize where that foot's going. Basically, that's all you're gonna see. And then we'll come down heel, 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 heel. The tail, I think the tail movement is a little bit off, but that's okay. We'll bring it down right there like that. We're going to reverse that arc. And let's get this head in here really quick. Man, i got to draw these fast. Is any Cintiq a bad Cintiq? I don't think... I, for me, personally, for Cintiqs, the bigger, the better. I like to draw big. I don't like to draw small. I'm 50 years old. I can't see the way I used to when I was in my 20s and 30s. And so I don't like working on 13-inch uh, Cintiqs. It's too small for my crappy eyes. And uh, so I like drawing big. I've got a 27-inch Cintiq now. And I know that there, you know, someone, someone accused me of being out of touch because I'm always talking about getting this big, you know, expensive equipment and everything else. Look, I was there with you guys. Uh, I've started out, and I know what it's like to, to you know, be on a tight budget. When I was younger, I I saved up. I just I, I just kept putting my money aside until I could get the equipment that I wanted and that I needed. And that's kind of what I recommend doing now. If, if you can survive, you know, a while without, 
you know the this then save up and get the right equipment when you can um, I really recommend that And, oh, and also, and, you know, an, an Intuos tablet is really well, is really good as well, which is, you know, the tablet where uh, you're drawing and you're looking at the screen separately. I, I've i used those and I like them. And if you can do that, that's great. But once again, I just, just for drawing ease, um, I really recommend uh, a Cintiq if you can, if you can manage it. So here's that. That step, we're, we're getting nice and smooth now. We're starting to get nice and smooth. And there's that placement, the side placement of the foot, which I think is actually working. It doesn't feel too slow after all. So I think I think that's going to be all right. When will you do your uh, watercolor course? Can't wait for that. You know what? It's <laughs> uh, it's I'm working on it. It's whenever I can. I've, I've got so many irons in the fire, so it's it, it'll happen. It'll come. I'm also going to do an oil painting course, and I've got the animation course coming up. It's just one of those things, I, um, especially with all the travel that I've been doing and, and lecturing, I'm having a hard time keeping up with getting the courses done. So we're, we're making a conscious effort this year to really cut back on our travel so we can focus more on getting more content out to you guys. So that's going to be our big goal this year. So we're, there's really only two big trips that we have scheduled for next year right now. Uh, one is a big European tour. And then the other one is a, uh, uh, we're going to be going to South Africa in the end of, uh, the end of February, beginning of March. Uh, would you ever do animation of an elephant? Oh yeah, I've done animation of elephants. I could do an elephant walk cycle for you guys at some point if you want. Did you already make a um, elephant an um, anatomy lesson? Yeah, I have a I have a, a PDF packet uh, that you get um, on my website uh, f on elephants. Gotcha. And one, <clears> of, the, uh, one of my good friends, uh, Corey, the guy I was staying with uh, last week. Yeah. Uh, he. You were saying uh, I I use the Intuos, uh, Wacom Intuos. Yes. And he says he loves those tablets. Yep. So. And uh, is he is Corey an artist? Um, he he's a programmer and all that, but he's he's done a lot of art back then. Yeah. So I mean, and now a lot of artists do use Intuos. For me personally, I'm just talking about my personal preference. I um, I, I'll use it on the road if I have to. But my preference is to have a Cintiq so I can... It just feels more like natural drawing, that's all. I mean, that, that's that's the beauty of having a Cintiq. It feels like you're drawing on a piece of paper or on a canvas or whatever it might be. Yeah, I've used uh, an Intuos before and uh, it's definitely a really good starting tool until you can get to the bigger, bigger stuff. Yeah, I, think, I personally think um, getting it into a tablet would be like a good foundation to get you started. Yeah. Then once you then once you get to a certain point of your savings, once you hit that money goal to get the the actual um, uh, Cintiq that you want, then that'll be the the finishing line right there. Yeah. Agreed. Of course, says he used to run a, a web comic and originally majored in art. Oh, awesome! 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 Will you ever have a writing for animation course? Well, we do have a writing for animation course. We have a, which is story uh, by Chuck Williams, um, and it's I think it's great. It's great. It's great. <laughs> It could use a little more cowbell. So there's that. Uh, what do I wish I'd studied more when I was younger? I wish I'd studied music more. And I wish I had studied another language. 
I wish I was bilingual, and I wish I uh, had studied more music. Those are my two big regrets. And, I, I mean, I could still do it. Uh, it's a little harder to learn as you get older, but I can still do it. Uh, and oh, also, we're doing Japan in June. I forgot about that. We are definitely doing Japan in June. We'll be in Tokyo. I love Japan. Are any of the other Cintiqs portable or just a companion? Uh, just a companion. And actually, I talked to um, the guys at the Wacom booth yeah. at CTN, and uh, they actually said that the, com that the companion line is obsolete now. And it's all the uh, the Cintiq Pro. Studio Pro. Well, they Studio have the Pro. Studio Pro, which yeah. is like the companion. Yeah, Studio Pro is pretty much the, the companion but uh, you can use it as either a completely separate computer, like a laptop, yeah, or, or a or a, a monitor. monitor. Yeah. And there was even a model that he showed me that um, that had like an integrated three um, D scanner. Oh, that's that awesome! You can scan objects into like a three D model on the on the Pro. So, yeah. What? <laughs> that's cool. What you, How about a said, car walk cycle? Someone just said, "I'm sorry, Dustin, I didn't mean oh, to." A car walk cycle? Yeah, how about a car walk cycle? That could be actually kind of funny. I think they did something like that in cars. Didn't they have something where they're like actually walking? I think so. They, they, they've done a couple where like... Or like the... Uh, like the Queen and all that were like sneaking up on the... Uh, yeah, that's what I mean. Cows. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely uh, very cartoon. It, it was very much like um, the... Uh, the taxi cab in uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Oh, yeah. Because he had his own walk cycles when he had a flat tire. Yeah. Oh, what did I do? What did I do on the other one? Got to remember what I did on the other one. For here. Will Ronnie be doing any new uh, uh, painting courses? Hold on one second. Yeah. What did I do for this? I came. Oh, I did. Okay. <coughs> I'm sorry. Will Ronnie be doing any what? New uh, painting courses. Oh yes, and he's going to be doing some drawing courses for beginners. Um. Yeah, he's got he's got some cool stuff coming up. Would love to see you animate a tree, like like a tree like blowing in the wind or whatever. Oh yeah. Okay. That's uh, that's some, that's some serious effects animation stuff. You know who does that really great is Miyazaki. Will I ever go to Sweden? I think we'll be in Sweden at some point. Uh, we don't have any plans on going to Sweden right now. I think we may. The closest we might get is uh, there's a good chance we'll be in Denmark. Uh, when we do our European tour, um, that might be as close to Sweden as we get. But, never say never. I'd love to get to Sweden. And Norway and Finland and all of that. All that fun stuff. Yes, all the Nordic countries. Hi, Aaron. Hi. What do you think ended Fox Animation, or at least Don Bluth's films? What do you think about the technique they use to make their movies, which is like tracing live action, like Anastasia? Well, that's that's called rotoscoping. And, you know, we did it at Disney. Disney did it. If you look at a lot of the, the dancing sequences in Snow White, all the way up through Sleeping Beauty and Cinderella and uh, 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 Jungle Book, and uh, uh, Robin Hood, they all had uh, rotoscoping in them. And reused animation as well. So it's not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, I think, I, I'm not sure what, I can't say what ended you know, those, those studios. I don't know. Um, I know, you know, running an animation studio is very difficult when you don't have a project and you're running a studio that has on a staff 
you have to pay that staff and if you're not getting paid for a job then you're you know it's very difficult because you're having to pull from the till and uh, that's a that's a difficult thing to do but um, I don't know I don't know what ended the studio do you ever have you ever tried uh, procreate or an art app yes I do I have I'm actually still learning procreate and once I get it really down under my belt I'm going to be doing a procreate course and selling procreate brushes but that's just um, I'm still getting all that down that's coming along pretty good man we are so close to having this walk cycle done from start to finish I don't know if you guys how many of you actually stayed through the whole thing but I hope at least a few of you did so you can see kind of the growth that we had been because for, what, about two and a half hours yeah and we're at our we're on our last drawing right now Sweet. 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 <laughs> <laughs> copy that we're going to paste that there so that we can have our in between so place that there place it there place place <laughs> <laughs> we're going to place it place it place it a uh, youtube roger comment and roger rabbit benny the cab was walking yes he was we just mentioned that just a little bit ago and uh you're absolutely right all right, so let's get these last drawings done. I just realized I got to get the front left foot to place the same way that the front right foot placed. There we go. I'm going to have that foot lift up. Like so. Feel that reverse. Can you feel it? All right. Oh, we're so close to having this done. And you guys, hopefully, you've learned something from this. Don't be scared of four-legged locomotion. Get out, study it. Once you understand that whole tripod thing, that there's always got to be three feet on the ground for... For movement for stabilization I should say then it makes sense huh and then when you get into a trot which is the next fastest piece of locomotion there's always two feet on the ground then when you get into a run then there's two feet and then one foot on the ground and then no feet on the ground the faster you go the less feet are on the ground which obviously makes sense but like I was saying earlier a lot of people forget that Got any, uh, new any tips on how to draw big cats? <laughs> yes. Go to my website, creatureartteacher.com, where everything is drastically on sale today. Drastically. And buy my How to Draw Big Cats course. Um, I've got, that's one of my best selling courses. Um, you know, the way I learned how to draw big cats was. Drawing from life, um, actually going to Africa, um, drawing skeletons. It's taken me years. and um, But what I've done is kind of boiled everything down that I know in this course and placed it and put it into this course, I should say. This drawing right here. I'm going to do that. This here. There, that's where the, the dew claw goes, is right there. Eric, can you export your 2B pencil from TV Paint so we can install? On our latest TV paint, they apparently removed it from the last version. No, there's no way they removed it. Don't tell me that. Apparently they did. 
That make, doesn't make any sense. That's the best pencil they have. Hey, I'm just a messenger here. Uh, I'm not sure how to do that, but if uh, when I, if I can, then I will. Uh, YouTube question. Aaron, say hi. I want to show my mom. Hey, mom. <laughs> how you doing? Hi, mom. I'm just sitting here animating. So here, I've got this foot coming way out. Like so. How to animate birds? Birds absolutely uh, fascinate me. I'm going to be doing birds. Birds are one of the first creatures I learned how to draw and paint. And um, I was very, I very much enjoy animating birds and bird mechanics. So I'll be doing that as well. Especially flight mechanics. All of that. All right, we're very close. We're getting really close. We're down to the wire here, folks. Bum, 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 bum. All right. So I'm going to finish drawing this face. Have scribbly, used... scribbly. Sorry. Sorry, go ahead. Have you ever used a tune boom? That's harmony. Remember that question about harmony? Yes. Uh, no, I've never used Toon Boom. I've only used TV Paint. Um, someone recommended that I would much rather use TV Paint, or I'd be better at TV Paint. And so that's I took their advice, and I've never used anything else. And I love TV Paint, so I haven't really found a need to try Toon Boom. Uh, and so I'll just continue using TV Paint. All right, here we are. So we have got our full, I'm going to get rid of that. We don't need that extra drawing. There's our full stride. So we started out with those those keys. And now we've got uh, our full walk cycle of 16 drawings on twos. Let's go ahead and play it. Let me do this and we'll play. And there's our walk cycle. There was a couple of little clunky things here. Uh, obviously, I didn't draw the muscles all the way through all the time, but I think otherwise it feels pretty good. I, that, the one thing I was worried about in placing the foot uh, sideways first and then and then coming down is it coming a little bit soft, and uh, it did soften it a little bit more than I'm comfortable with, but it's not too bad. Um, but I'm I'm pretty happy with it overall. You can feel the shoulder blades moving up and down. The head back and forth feels good. Like I said, this is all very much an exaggeration. So a cat in real life doesn't have exactly this much bobbing up and down. But I wanted to push it. So, I mean, that's one of the things we do as animators is that we take life and we exaggerate it. And so sometimes I want to exaggerate something like this in order to... I just want you to feel the weight a little bit more. I want you to feel the dynamics a little bit more. And that's what I tried to do here, especially in the front half of the body where you can see the feet coming forward and placing the up and down of the shoulders and the bobbing of the head. Um, it's actually not too far off because uh, I have seen some tigers and lions, especially big heavy lions that will have a little bit of this in their, uh, in their gait. But um, I would, because it's... Uh, uh, the movement of the feet is still fairly broad. Um, I would go through and do this again uh, and get uh, animate. I'm sorry, in between it one more time, do another pass and get it down to ones so that the movement would be even smoother. But you can see uh, we've got the latissimus muscle kind of stretching as the front right foot stretches forward. Um, everything places pretty well. Uh, I'm pretty happy with it. So that's uh, that's a walk cycle. That's how I animate a walk cycle. Remember, we start with that first pose, and you got to think about those that tripod moving forward. I start. I like to start with the front feet apart, and if the front feet apart are apart, then that means there's a back foot that's coming forward to replace one of those back those front feet. And also, when the front feet are apart, that's the low point in the shoulder blades. And then when you get to the back, that means it's going to be the high point in the hips. And so you get this rocking motion back and forth in the body, and you can see that happening now. So those are all the little bits and pieces that uh, 
uh, of a walk cycle that I wanted to show you. I hope you guys learned something from this. You know, animating animal locks, walk cycles is a lot of fun. Like I said, especially if you can get it, the mechanics right like this, um, it just feels, it feels real world. It feels really cool. Um, and if you're doing 3D and you can take this stuff and apply it, then it's that much more uh, realistic and smooth and, and kind of cool. So, like I said, I hope you guys learned something. Remember, our website, we are still doing our... Uh, Cyber Monday sale. It's still going on. It's it's a limited time, but you, if you get there, um, we there are huge savings. Our Big Cat course, our Animal Bundle is over a hundred dollars, or is a hundred dollars off. Uh, you can uh, if you want to do a uh, uh, an annual membership, which is you get everything on the site, and not only do you get everything on the site, you'll get everything that I do for the next year. Um, that's seventy five dollars off. So there's a lot of great deals right there. I really recommend it. Um, and like I said, you know, get that membership now because as I create more material, I'm going to have to raise those prices down the road of, of what those memberships are going to cost. So if you get in now, that price is going to stay. Uh, but anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I've really enjoyed talking with you guys. I've missed being here, actually, with all the holidays. I'm going to be out probably. Uh, actually, I will be out. Um, next week. I'm not sure if we're going to be able to do a, a, a live stream on Thursday. We're going to try. Uh, but otherwise, I'm going to be in Manchester, England all of next week teaching at Traveler's Tales. Those are the folks that do all of the Lego movie uh, games. And uh, I'm going to be working with them, talking about animation, story, having a great time with those folks. I'm really looking forward to that. And, uh, and until then, I hope you guys have a great week. And like I said, I'll probably see you on Thursday, although we're not sure yet. Uh, and like I always say, get out there and put some beauty back in the world. That's what we do as artists. And, um, and I think we should as human beings. The world needs it. So get out there, put some beauty back in the world. Be nice to somebody. Put your grocery cart away. Just start with that. <laughs> Open the door for somebody. But, uh... Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I, um, I certainly did. Uh, I'm going to take off and um, have a great couple of days until I see you again. Dustin? See you guys. Kawabiba.